Okay, so here is the finished retop. Uh, the UVs are done as well. And this is the kind of the final configuration ready for texturing and baking in Substance Painter. Uh, but there's a couple things that I want to talk about here before we jump into anything else. And that is I've got two scenarios of the geometry. One of them is going to be everything as it is ready to be uh, textured. And then the other scenario is how it needs to be in order to have the UVs laid out. So if I open up the UVs and select everything, and you can see here what the UVs look like. So it, it's um, th as far as the shells go, most of this stuff is on one shell. The white lines here are going to be where it's cut. And the only reason I cut it is because there was a distortion in the UVs that I wanted to try to reduce. And you can see what the distortion looks like by clicking the select on right here. And anywhere that it's red or blue, that means either not enough UV space uh, is being given to the, uh, the the shell here or too much. Well, blue is too much. So we can kind of get a sense for uh, how reactive this is. Like if I just grab some random UV over here and pull it out, starts to get very blue because that's a lot more textile space than these faces need according to what Maya thinks it should be using. And you can see kind of how that works, right? So it's easy to see where you have distortion and where you have distortion. One of the solutions for that is going to be uh, just cutting the shell so that it can relax in a way that's sort of more uh, in accordance to what the geometry kind of wants to do. As always, less is better than, than more when it comes to shells. So don't go crazy with it. Like you certainly wouldn't need to separate each panel out into its own shell or anything. There's there's a, no reason to do that. Here, just imagine it's like a piece of cardboard, right? And if we wanted to lay this flat, we would need to separate this piece out so that it can it can do that. So that is kind of what's going on there. Now, as far as why things are, some things are included and some things are not included, that's because I want stuff to stack, right? So like, I've only got one engine. I've only got one little back engine there. These legs here, there's only one set, but in the front here, I have two different sets. So normally what you could do if, if like I wanted these guys to be stacked, you could just delete this section here and then do the UVs and then mirror everything over and, and you could re-UV it and have it stack similar shells. I don't go and do that, but I wanted these to be unique. So what I'm doing here is everything that exists in the geometry here is going to have unique UV shell. And then once I have decided everything that I want to be uh, stacked, uh, I can go ahead and, sorry, unique, I can go ahead and just mirror stuff over. So, um, and the wings are kind of a special case because they're actually, it's mirrored over and then it's duplicated again for the inside faces because uh, it will definitely uh, back face call. So like if I double click here and I delete, you can see there's like this inside. So in order to have both sides of the wing visible, you need to go ahead and set it up like this. Uh, and this is, unless you want to do double-sided, but double-sided will make, like if anything else is on that material, then it'll all be double-sided and, and that's um, essentially uh, doubling the poly count. So you wouldn't, it wouldn't be op optimal from a performance perspective uh, to take that approach. So duplicating these, there aren't that many faces is kind of a better solution. And because I laid the UVs out when there was only one wing, then uh, all of the the wings, it looks like I hit it. Uh, all of the wings are gonna be sitting on the same UV space, which is just a nice uh, optimization. And they're all gonna look the same, but I don't care, they're supposed to look the same. So now that we are in this, this arrangement where we've got some stuff stacked and some stuff unique, and similar things are not necessarily stacked. That's that's kind of the difference here. We can take a look at the advantage in textile density that we're getting from doing it this way. And that's kind of what it's all about is I wanna maximize uh, having unique texturing where it needs to be unique and also not wasting textiles on stuff that can be stacked. So the reason I made these unique is because you can see them and I don't want the same scratch showing up on both sides as a mirror, right? So, uh, but these, you you can't really see the other set of legs from the side and vice versa. So it's okay for these to be the same. Um, okay, so the difference here, if I come over and we'll just take a quick look at the stuff here. Uh, we'll grab the UV toolkit, kind of give it a little dock there if we can. Go to transform and we'll just grab these faces 
and do a, where is it here? We're looking for texel density right here. Okay, so we'll say the map size is 2048 and we're gonna say get and our value is gonna be 475. So that means this is gonna be for, like if this thing was, let's say, um, 1,000 units or like a meter long or whatever, hypothetically, then we're going to have uh, 475 pixels per like from here to here. So um, you want to just, that number just needs to be as, as high as possible or uh, within the range that is determined by, you know, art directors or whatever else. So, but in, in this case, we're just going to look at it as a relative value. So we have 475. And if I come over here and I'm just going to, We'll do this very quick and dirty. I'm going to duplicate this because I don't want to. I'm just going to delete it when I'm done. And we'll hide the original one. Okay, so if I grab all this stuff and I just lay it out uniquely, as in nothing is stacked, you can do a layout there. And it's a little bit of a cheat because all those wings there. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and we can, we can nuke a couple of these wings because that's kind of a special case. Doesn't really matter which two wings, but let's see if we can get a little bit more reasonable of a layout. Okay, fine. So now everything is unique and I can go back to that value here in transform. And so we were at 475 and now we are at 406. So let me do the math. So 406 divided by uh, 475 gives us 85. So basically we're, we're getting a 15% increase in texel density by doing the stacking stuff. And it, it really makes a big difference, especially considering there's gonna be some some fine detail, like I might wanna throw some text on here, or like I know that there's gonna be some kind of interesting stuff happening with the eyes. So every last little bit helps. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna export two versions of this FBX. We're gonna export the texturing version and we're gonna export the baking version. And this might seem like, a, again, like a little bit of an awkward process, but this is just the way that I've I've learned to do it over the years. And again, this effort is going to give us a 15% increase in textile density in this case, right? Your results may vary. So the other thing to take a look at is ZBrush. So here you can see I've applied all of my material IDs way back at the end of the last tutorial, a few months ago, where I, I finished the modeling here. I did a sort of a, a composite in Photoshop of various materials. And I'm, I'm going to use that as my concept for how this thing is going to get textured. The texturing is going to push that stuff a lot further in Painter because it's just possible to do that. Whereas uh, in, uh, at least as far as my materials and lighting experience in, in ZBrush, it's not really worth spending a whole lot of time. But anyway, so that's kind of where these colors are coming from. Like this thing and this thing are going to be in the same material, all the purple stuff, the light purple stuff, I should say, and the dark purple stuff will be a different material so on and so forth. So let's just take a quick look at how I made the wing. So there may be a temptation when you're thinking about this wing to do some kind of retop of the whole thing, but that is going to give you a piece of geometry that has a really, really high poly count and it's completely necessary for thin stuff like this. So what I'd like to do here is a process. I think I'm probably out of time to talk about in any detail in, uh, in this video, but we're going to make this 2D plane. We're going to create uh, an, an alpha here for the for the holes and put all together in, in Painter, and it's going to look awesome. So stick around for the next video, and we will cover that process.